We are in Ulaanbaatar. From here, from Genghis Square, we will start our journey through Mongolia. The capital city of Mongolia is a mixture between Russian and Chinese style. The city is the starting point for any travelers, and as usual, we try to see as much as we can in the little time we have. We're now at the black market, the most famous market in Ulaanbaatar. Two cars, beautiful mechanic, uh, Russian, uh, jewels, and uh, ready to go. Finally, we have our cars and we start driving towards south, towards the Gobi Desert. Everything turns yellow, yellow like the flat landscape that is going to surround us for the next few days. Bravissimo! Dai un po' di gas, dai accelera un po', accelera un po'. Accelera un po'. Second day, we are going to Gobi Desert. Once we enter the Gobi area, we head towards the Yolinam Canyon. We walk along the small river and we enjoy ourselves jumping from one shore to the other. In the middle of the Gobi, we just found like a massive ice cube. Mission accomplished, we go back to the cars. Vai, 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 non sta andando, tu non non fermarti. The Gobi is the second largest desert in the world and it's not only sand dunes but also mountains and dry lands. Today is the main day on the Gobi Desert, we go to see the sand dunes. are here where the sand dunes are and we will try to climb them so let's give it a go sand dunes run for over 100 kilometers and their top can reach up to 300 meters which is the right way to climb it
unfortunately, it's a very grey and rainy day. But while we're reaching up the top of the dunes, the sky clears up and the sun appears. It appears and it colors the sun dunes in gold. Today we change directions and we head northwest. We constantly off roads and of course we start in having some troubles with the cars. We are driving in the middle of nowhere, with no direction in our roads. The Orkham Valley, we're gonna pass through two high mountain passes and uh, we're gonna see the Orkham Valley. Fast by, right? No, but I'm not playing it. No, we're only. Suddenly, one of our car breaks down and we have to stop and ask for help to one of the local family. Still live in traditional tents and they still follow their ancient traditions. This gives us the opportunity to experience the famous Mongolian hospitality and visit a traditional tent. The yurt has been the center of Mongolian families for more than 3,000 years. Some, someone like around 10,000 euros. Oh, really? well, yes, trust. When we finally reach the Orkham Valley, the landscape has changed. Green hills and gorgeous rivers replace the flood landscape. This is a girl, uh, only real uh, Mongolian typical house. In the middle you can find the fire, the real, the real things that join the family. Today is an important day. We are in the middle of the, our, our journey and we are going to see what is left of the old Mongol capital of Karkorin. On our way to Karakurin, we stop to visit a small monastery that is hidden at the top of a hill. This is Tufkom Sacred Monastery. This 
is what is left from the ancient Mongol Empire that I believe. And it was destroyed in 1500 and then they used basically all the ruins to build the temple that is at my left hand side. Erdenetsu Monastery has been built in the 16th century, near the site of the old Mongol capital, which was completely destroyed. The Turtle Rock is the only original stone left. Keep going on the north and we will pass by the White Lake. We keep driving north. The weather is changing. Temperature drops and it starts raining. The colors of the volcanic crater are definitely matching this miserable day. We are the white lake now. We have a technical problem. The fan of the engine is broken due to our river crust. Okay, finally the day is ended. So now, finally, we got to the camp. It's 2 a.m. in the morning. The only thing we want to do is just go to sleep. And here we go. We spent the night crossing rivers, uh, crossing, uh, going through snowstorms, and now, and now we are here, direction to uh, Lake Kosvogol. We're back in the car and it keeps raining. As soon as we reach the top of the mountains, this rain becomes snow. With our winter equipment, we spend more than four hours stuck on a mountain pass. After almost 12 hours of non-stop driving, we finally reached the Kosvogol Lake. We're now in the north, near the Russian border.
after the past few days, we actually feel like we're in heaven. Beautiful sunny day on Lake Cosmogo, and the kids here are playing. The lake contains 2% of the total still water in the world and is one of the favorite holiday places for the locals. We finally have some time for ourselves. Some of us take a boat, some prefer horse riding and, and someone decides to swim in the freezing water. Beautiful warm <laughs> morning. Uh, we are now leaving uh, the lake uh, Osgo towards uh, uh, our trip back to Ulamata. Hit the road again, and this time we go towards east. Along the way, we briefly stop at Erdenet, that is an industrial city built by the Russians in the 80s. industrial uh, city in Mongolia. Uh, you can see a typical uh, Russian industry similar to an holocaust nuclear <laughs> which is uh, the biggest temple in Mongolia. The Amar Bais Galant Monastery is one of the three main temple sites. It was built by the Manchu Emperor in the 17th century and it survived the Russian devastation after the Second World War. It's our last day in Ankolia and now we are going back to Ulaanbaatar. We're now at the end of our trip and we go back to Ulaanbaatar. We enter the city from north this time and while we're crossing the city we are amazed by the number of buildings and houses under construction. It feels like a traditionally nomadic population is now keen to settle down. But before we leave the country, we still have to try one of the typical Mongolian dish. Warning! The following footage contains strong food violence. We are about to taste a um, sheep's head that is one of the delicacies in the Mongolian cuisine.
从成吉思汗国际机场后进楼进港，机舱外的温度十摄氏度，五十华氏度。飞机还将滑行一段距离，请您继续留在座位上，并系好安全带，保持您的手机处于关闭状态，直到飞机完全停稳，客舱灯光调亮。全体机组成员再次感谢您选乘星空联盟成员，中国国际航空公司。深圳航空公司代码共享的航班，我们很荣幸与您共同度过了一段愉快的旅程，期待与您再次相会。祝您在乌兰巴托愉快，度过美好的一天，再见。Welcome to Ulan Bator, ladies and gentlemen. We have just landed at Chengiz Tianlong International Airport. The temperature is 10 degrees Celsius or 15 degrees Fahrenheit. You are required to remain seated with the seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt sign is switched off. Please also keep your mobile phone switched off until the aircraft comes to complete. The Gobi Desert is beautiful. It's amazing being out here alone. But I haven't prepared properly. I thought it'd be more developed than this. I've run out of food and water. I'm 
not sure if I'm going in the right direction. There are no roads and no signs, so I'm just trying to make sure I head northwest. I hope I can get to a town soon. Made it to a town. Not gonna die. After my experience in the Gobi, I'm going to try to do what the Mongolians do. Pay homage to the travel gods. I've been welcomed in by several Mongolian families. I'm so grateful for the hospitality. Even though they don't have much, they still feed me plenty. Back there, probably about 5 10 k's, I was sure I was lost. It's uh, really easy, I think, to get lost in Mongolia. There are no proper roads, um, just like a whole bunch of tire tracks. There's no signs, and the tire tracks go in all kinds of directions, so it's really, really hard to know at any one point where you are and if you're on the right road. And my compass is cheap and crap, and it's not much help. I'm lost. I lost one cycling glove, lost my sunglasses. One of the guys decided to help and he was on a horse and I was on a bike and he took us through lots of places where you can't cycle. I was pushing the bike through really long grass and up really steep hills. I haven't had a wash in three days, I'm covered in sunburn. I've got food, I've got, I think, enough water. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not the worst, but it's, uh, it's pretty tough.
As the months roll by, it's more common that I ask myself, what the hell am I doing out here? I have a major problem. My right knee, which has been painful um, while cycling for about the past three months, is now very painful and um, I don't know what to do. It's painful even just to walk on it. So I'm going to have to have a think about what I'm going to do and see if it stops hurting so much. My knee is still pretty fucked up. And eventually I've decided that uh, I'm going to keep on going until I truly, absolutely can't. It's um, better than just turning around and going back to Ulaanbaatar and packing it all in.